There was a lot of anticipation in the markets for the launch of spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds in the United States. But with the price of Bitcoin itself coming under pressure, how is the market for these products shaking out? Joining us now to discuss Brian Armour, Director of Passive Strategies Research for North America at Morningstar Research. Oh, Brian, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to have you on as a guest, a first time guest. Let's talk about these spot Bitcoin ETFs. They're fairly new. They've only been in the market for a couple of weeks, but we do have some information now under our belts in terms of investor interest. How is the market shaking out? Yeah, so it's so far been a hit and <clears throat> we had 11 different ETFs approved. One had previous, previously existed as a, a trust um, in GBTC uh, from Grayscale and, and Hashtags is yet, yet to convert. But the new nine have really taken off. And, you know, first six trading days, uh, they traded two, 250 million shares. And, um, you know, for iShares and Fidelity ETFs, which have sort of gotten gone out to the front of the pack, um, you know, they're, they're trading over 10 million shares per day. Uh, spreads are already down to penny wide. Um, and, and both have broken through to almost a, a billion and a half in assets. So that would suggest that liquidity is there. Is it important as we try, and it's still early days as we we're saying, to try to figure out the market appetite for these spot Bitcoin ETFs that we take that away from the actual price of Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin, I think, is down about 20% since these launch. There was a run up into this launch. But of course, this is what they track. They track the price of Bitcoin. But we start talking about fund flows. That seems to be the place we want to keep an eye on. Yeah, the when we look at flows, we're really looking for where investors are putting their dollars to work. And so it's it's there's a huge headwind that is so far Bitcoin is has not performed well since he's launched and down 15, 20 percent since the 11th when they first launched. But overall, it's in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the, the actual structure of the products. It's a better it's a better structure than what currently exists in the market in the U.S. I know we're late to the party, but um, in terms of uh, you know futures based uh, Bitcoin ETFs or grantor trusts, um, so it's it's good in terms of accessibility, but obviously uh, you you don't want to get too comfortable just because it's better than what currently exists. It still obviously is exposed to the price of Bitcoin. Now, when I take a look at the fund flow so far and the bit of information we do have that the issuers are putting out, I think this might be related, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, to some of the fee wars we've seen as well. Money seems to be moving out of some of these spot, boy, spot uh, Bitcoin ETFs into others, and we know that the fee war kicked off, I think, even before some of them were listed. Yeah, it's it's been a really interesting uh, take on game theory, and, and really all these ETFs hold the same thing that is, you know, physical Bitcoin, if it can be physical. Um, and uh, and so really the the fee was one of the best marketing techniques for for these uh, fund, uh, fund providers. And so what we saw was as they were working with the SEC, they went through several different amendments of their filings and and slowly they started trickling out what what fees they were going to plan to charge. And then they started responding to one another and and ended up being a fee war broke out and we saw fees drop from you know 79 basis points as i believe was the first uh fee that came out all the way down to what ended up at 19 basis points which is the lowest fee uh uh offering right now but then on top of that they're all waiving fees for the first six months first year up to a billion dollars uh and and so most of the etfs are actually free to own right now um so it's it's been very highly competitive but that ends up being a, a big win for investors. How, because investors obviously, yeah, if you cut those fees down to zero for a certain amount of time, you're not paying those fees to get into the funds. Uh, in terms of the competitive landscape, obviously very competitive right off the hop. What might we expect over the next several months? As you know, investors get used to these products, uh, still a lot of competition from 11 different issuers, which you know basically try to attract investor money. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think right off the bat, you have Grayscale, the incumbent, being used as as something of a trading tool by market makers, and um, it's this is the first time it's traded sort of near its net asset value in in a while, and so we've seen a lot of investors selling out. Um, in in that sense, you know the the competition competition sort of eating Grayscale's market position. Um, I expect that to continue. They're the only issuer with a fee of you know one point five percent of which is significantly different than the rest of the pack. Most are in that 19 to, to 30 basis point range. Um, but on top of that, you know, it's iShares Fidelity have really um, uh, come out in front so far. 
um, and then Bitwise and, and Arc are in that next tier, and Vesco's you know starting to knock on that door. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting how it all plays out. But overall, having all these come out together, having the existing uh, trust and futures and the underlying crypto market, underlying futures market has really created a strong, robust liquidity ecosystem for all these ETFs. So trading has been um, very strong. You mentioned, Brian, obviously that there are other ways to play cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin before the spot Bitcoin ETFs, the futures, um, the miners. Uh, but remind us, here, what, what actually happened a couple of weeks ago in terms of these spot Bitcoin ETFs? What are they? How do they work? Yeah, so, I mean, they these are just hold Bitcoin. And so there's a little complexity in terms of how they get access. The SEC still, SEC still doesn't want any broker dealers actually touching Bitcoin themselves. So what they end up doing is uh, 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 authorized participants are only allowed to do cash creates and redeems. They go through other brokers who go out to crypto exchanges to buy or sell Bitcoin as needed. So for the most part, it's all creations other than Grayscale where, where we've seen some redemptions. Um, but but compared to futures, they don't have to worry about rolling the futures contract each month and, and some of the, the inefficiencies there or when uh, Grayscale's GBTC was a, a, a grantor trust. Um, they don't have to worry about it acting more like a closed end fund where there weren't any there was an ability to redeem. Um, and so it ends up trading at like large premiums or discounts as a result. Okay, so obviously some of the attributes there that are different than the products that are available before still, what are some of the risks in investing in a spot Bitcoin ETF? Yeah, I mean, no matter what, the risk of Bitcoin is sort of the primary concern. And that's because Bitcoin is has moved uh, significantly. We've had, you know, compared to US stock market, uh, the standard deviation is over four times as high. Um, over the past five years, there have been four different drawdowns of 45% or more, despite the fact that it's, you know, performed very well overall over that period um, in total. But the issue is it's not really, it's untethered from a fundamental value. And um, it's really hard to price. It's hard to say what its value should be, why it should go up. And and that's really the, the underlying concern for investors. So, um, you know, they should only invest in Bitcoin if, if they see value in doing so. Uh, you know, fear of missing out is not a very smart investment strategy.